It was an uphill battle for the majority of this regular season between us and the Philadelphia Flyers for who would claim that top spot in the Metro Division. Ultimately, we won out. We made it past the New York Islanders in the first round. Yet here we are. Here we are. We are scheduled to take on Philadelphia in round two as they were able to make it past the New York Rangers in six games, both New York teams falling in that first round. So it's going to be interesting. Battle of Alberta in the second round, which, you know, I was actually just thinking to myself, like, I never recorded the video about the whole Battle of Alberta, but really what was there to say about, you know, the, the, the games? Like, yeah, there were fights. It was fun. It was entertaining. I'm a Neanderthal that still likes fights. What do you want me to say? I mean, as long as the combatants are willing, you know the dangers you're getting into. Not saying, you know, that I want players to make it to the league solely because they know how to throw hands. But, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit of a Neanderthal in that way. Sorry, Dan Carcillo, but I still think, you know, if if it's adults who sign up to do this, you, you know the risks at this point. So, I don't know. Anyway, controversial hockey take. Our lineup is looking pretty darn good, if you ask me, up to this point. Again, the controversial addition of Svechnikov, notwithstanding. But four points in six games for Tarasenko, four for Kravtsov, four assists for uh, Andrei Svechnikov. We'll see what he can do here in this next round. Hopefully get on the board in terms of goals. Of course, Kaprizov, Malkin, and Ovechkin, arguably our best line all season. Third line with Kavanov, Barbashev, and Dadnov was phenomenal against the Islanders. And then Mikheyev alongside Korshkov and Marchenko. Not too bad either, all things considered. Defensively, of course, the Provorov. Sergachev pairing looking great, as they did pretty much all year. Alexei Evan Romanov looking fine. Looking to see a little bit more, perhaps, at Mukama Dulin and Zadorov, but it's not bad, you know, per se. And then goaltending wise, Yaroslav Askarov, the 916 save percentage. Hopefully, he continues to play to his best. So, you know our lineup. You might love our lineup. You might not. Hopefully, we'll come to uh, learn and love this lineup, or at least love this lineup, because, hey, it could be a very interesting year for us, or we could be set up here for a very disappointing end to our season, and when you're going up against a lineup like that, with center depth like that, yeah, no, there's a very good chance this could end up going horribly for us. You have Andre Burakovsky, point a game in the first round, defensively pretty shaky, though, Morgan Frost, four points and a minus three, and then five points for Janssen, so... Very interesting top line for the Flyers, looking a little bit defensively shaky. You have Faraby, point a game, four goals, but a minus one. Claude Giroux at this point, 37 years old, and Voracek. So defensively, I'm shocked. The members of their top six, I believe all but one. Not every single one of them had a minus rating, which again, plus minus isn't great, but it does get, you know, just kind of go to show like, oh, hey, yeah, you were out there offensively. You know, was it power play points that was really doing the job for you, or are you just that bad defensively? Voracek does have. Some power play points that kind of lends uh, credibility to that theory. Connor Zari, I think it's Zari. It might be Zari. I'm probably going to say Zari for this series. Two points and a minus two. Nolan Patrick looking good so far. A little bit defensively say shaky. And then Sergey Chistov. Sergey Chistov. Sergey Chistov. Who, you know. We made the right choice in getting rid of him, in my opinion. You know, he's the one that allowed us to bring in Provorov. <sighs> is he going to come back to haunt us? Fourth line is Isaac Ratcliffe, Kevin Hayes, and Travis Konechny. So, pretty shocking to see Konechny on that fourth line. Obviously, well-rounded, solid, some game changers with Frost and Farabee. Could be problematic. Defensively. I mean, in theory, we'd be okay here. It's Goss to spare. And Nick Letty. Cam York next to Cody CC, Mitch Van de Sample next to Chase Prisky. How did they make it out of that round? Cat a hat on 928. That's how they made it out of the first round. Yeah. So, they are very successful on the power play. And they have Carter Hart between the pipes. Who, yes, I will be calling Cat a Hat for the entire series. Bobby Brink is there as well. So when it comes to the overall matchup, I'm intrigued to see how this game judges it. We have the edge in defense and in goaltending in theory, but they have the slight edge offensively. Tough to say how this is going to go. It is a fairly close matchup. 
You run into a team like Philly in the playoffs, you immediately have to think, yep, we're screwed. Time will tell, though. If that is the case... Oh, boy. All right, let's do this. I can't buy it any more time. I cannot delay any further. We get this second round matchup against Philadelphia underway. First period of game one and an early advantage for Philly. It's Jake Voracek with the goal. 11 shots to nine. We are trailing. Second period, we are still trailing. Kirill Marchenko was able to score. Andre Burakovsky restores the lead. Relatively close in shots. Down two to one here. As we're able to tie it fairly early into the period, Alex Ovechkin on the power play, but Andreas Janssen on the power play is able to get it right back. We still trail by one. Good to see Ovi scoring, though. Power play goes to waste. We get a quick one of our own that we can't do anything with, but Nikita Kavanov can score. What a job done by him to step up ever since we made those deadline moves. Two minutes remaining in regulation. We are going to overtime in game one. Nikita Kavanov able to tie this. 29 shots to 26. It's a super close game between evenly matched teams. No real surprise. Question is, who's winning in game one? We're about to find out. Make your predictions now. Who's scoring the winner? And if you said Chase Prisky, you win. As do the Philadelphia Flyers. One minute, 19 seconds into OT. Chase Prisky, the defenseman, ends it. For the Flyers, they take game one on the road. That is incredibly disappointing. It's the only real way to put it. A brutal game for Romanov and Alexiev and then Kravtsov, Tarasenko, Svechnikov. I mean, Ovechkin and Malkin, you see the players that really let us down there. And ultimately, not a great game for Yaro Askarov. So, oh, okay. Yep, that's just okay. All right, you know, you know, sure, sure. Why not? Why not? To quote a great poet in Steve Dangle, why not? We are without Prover off, I assume, for the rest of this series. And what could prove to be the death knell. Not the death knell, the death knell. I want to keep Mukama, Dulian, and Zadorov together. Ultimately, that's a tremendous third pairing. Uh, so Dmitry Kalikov is going to step up. And, uh, you know, we're going to put him with Mikhail Sergachev <laughs> to keep the other pairings together. So this is where Nikita Zaitsev would have come in handy. Instead, it's the veteran Dmitry Kalikov who will step up into this lineup. And that will have us hoping for the best here. As obviously Jordan Martinuk needs to take a seat in favor of Marchenko. So that could be devastating. Absolutely could be. It looks like Provorov could be back if this series goes the distance. Actually, he should be good to go for Game 5. I thought he was going to miss the whole thing. He should be good to go for Game 5 as the Glasgow clan have been knocked out of the playoffs in round two. Swept by the Utica Comets. Decent season for them, though, of course, with some of the prospects we have in the minors. So no Provorov in game two. Of course, the player that we you know gave a king's ransom to Philadelphia for. Let's see what happens. First period, scoreless. 12 shots, 10. Relatively, relatively uh, uneventful period. Second, and Philly has the lead. It's Prisky again. 30 shots to 17 now. That's relatively eventful. Oh, we're down by one in desperate need of a goal. As we are on the power play here, nothing doing, though. In danger of losing the first two games at home, which means if we win game three, perhaps it's just the home team never wins. Although, if we, you know, lose, if we lose game three, then that would be a nightmare. Speaking of of nightmares 38 shots to 26 and a 26 save shutout for say it with me now 321 cat a hat wow <clears throat> that is not what i expected askarov did a phenomenal job of keeping us in this game but ultimately we could just not find the back of the net and that is because of carter hart 
outscored 5-3 to three over the first two games of this series. We are trailing here, heading into game three. I am petrified to not make chances, but you know what? We're going to see if we can battle back here. You'd like to think a team of this caliber would. We're about to get the answer as far as what type of series this could be. A loss here would be devastating. First period and an advantage to the Russians. Andrei Svechnikov on the power play. His first goal of this postseason run. 13 shots to 8. That is exactly the start that we needed. Second period. Goal apiece. Andreas Janssen tied at 38 seconds in. But Gino is able to get it back. 24 shots to 18. 2-1. to one. On the board, heading into the third period of what is basically a must-win game for the Russians. Let's see what we can do here. The insurance goal would be nice, and we get it. Kirill Kaprizov, 3-1, halfway through the third period. Power play again for the Russians, Vitaly Kravtsov. And that'll do it, I would hope. I might have spoken too soon. Farabee with the goal, power play for Phillies killed off. Under two minutes remaining, and we are in the clear. 4-2 is your final in Game 3. Thus far, the home team is yet to win, and we need to hope that that trend continues heading into Game 2. Malkin, Kaprizov, and Svechnikov leading the way for this team. As you see, Evgeny Malkin, three-point game. Absolutely tremendous. Mukama doing and Zadorov weren't exactly great. Fair play to Yarrow Askarov. Another strong performance. Thankfully, this time, the offense in front of him was on point. Kalikov has a first line time and he's complaining about ice time. Great game. I mean, what more do you really want me to say about that? You have. No, you know what? No. Let's, let's take a look at this. Let's do it. Let's take a look at this. Let's do it. You have a top six defenseman who's getting 21 and a half minutes of time on ice, which is more than any other defenseman other than Mikhail Sergachev. And he's complaining about ice time. I don't know what his personality type is or whatever, but I mean, come on. And, you know, let's see if we can find his personality type here. Should No, okay, you can't even see it. Here's the thing. I will admit that I'm a little bit salty lately because there were still no changes for franchise mode in the most recent patch. They focused on gameplay. For me, the gameplay is still not for me. I just, I don't think it's good. I don't think... Collision detection, puck protection, puck pickups, uh, the checking system. And there's just a lot that I don't like about the gameplay. And the fact that there were no franchise mode changes as well. Uh, when we see outrageous trades like we always see. And even something like this. Where it's like there is no excuse for this player to be complaining. Yet they're complaining. You know? I'm just saying. Just saying. Had he been complaining when he was a healthy scratch? Sure. He's not a healthy scratch anymore. Not cool. Not cool. What is cool is that we won game three. What would be even cooler is if we can win game four. Will the trend continue or will the Flyers have their first of potentially three opportunities to close out this series in game five? We're about to find out. First period and a decent start for the Russians. Power play goal for Gino. Farabee gets it back. Nikita Zadorov scores shorthanded. Who the hell saw that coming? 14 shots to 8. Zadorov with the difference maker thus far. Unbelievable. Second period. I mean, we're still in the lead. Chistov was able to tie it. Kirill Kaprizov able to get the goal back. 21 shots to 20, yet 3 to 2 on the board. Cap doing incredibly well thus far. And yeah, that Chistov goal concerns me. We go to the third, Vladdy. Abel. To double up the lead. It's now 4-2. to two. Although Kevin Hayes says it's not quite over yet. 13 and a half to go. There's still a long way to go in this game. Although we're halfway through the third. Can we do anything here? Power play opportunity. Damn it. Three minutes left. Can we please hold on please? Thank you. Through four games in this series. And tell me. If you've heard this one before, the home team has yet to win. It's either the home team wins all of them or the home team gets to win. It is yet to win. English is my first language, believe it or not. Not a great game 
for some members of this team. Askarov wasn't phenomenal, but he was good enough. And this is essentially a best of three from this point onward. No Provorov in game five. Still no Provorov in game five. He is good enough to play, but we are not going to play him unless he is 100% because of how likely he would be to get hurt again. So we keep the team the same. Fifth game of this series. Who will take advantage? Can we snap the home team losing streak? Let's find out. First period, and we are tied at two. Tarasenko and a power play goal for Ovechkin. We had a two-goal lead within four minutes and four seconds, but from there, Giroux and Ratcliffe are able to tie this game up. 16 shots to 11 in their favor. Second period, and the high scoring continues. Tarasenko gives us the lead. Kevin Hayes takes it away just seconds later. Andrei Svechnikov, just under three minutes later. 2.58, if you want to be exact, is able to score. And that held for the rest of the period. So 25 shots to 22. We are up 4-3 to three on the board. Can we hold on? Power play for the Flyers. Unsuccessful. Again, looking to become the first team to win at home in this series thus far. It would give us that crucial chance to win it in six. We have under seven minutes remaining here. Power play for the Russians. Killed off under two minutes. <laughs> it was too good to be true. Oh, no. There's a reason I didn't get too excited. And that's the reason. 15 seconds to go. Joel Faraby ties this game up at four goals apiece. We are going to overtime for the second time in this series. Philly, of course, won game one, thanks to one Chase Prisky. And they will have the opportunity to win it here as well, complete the comeback, and have a chance to end the series on home ice in game six. Whether or not they are able to do so, we're about to find out. Overtime, we need a win. Oh, so desperately... Can we get it, though? Power play chance for the Russians. I thought it was shorthanded. It was not. The grade eight. Alex Ovechkin on the power play wins it. Whew. For the first time, the home team has won in this series. 40 shots to 37. But a narrow escape for the Russians. A late goal from Farabee. Enough to force overtime, but not enough to see his team end up with the win. And we are one win away from the conference final with two opportunities to seal the deal. What a game for Andrei Svechnikov, uh, for Vladimir Tarasenko, of course, at the top, and then Vitaly Krafts off that top line. Absolutely tremendous. And then again, Alex Ovechkin at the top with the two goals. Just phenomenal. Ovi only took four shots the entire game. Two of them went in because he's Alex Ovechkin. Askarov was not great, but he was good enough. Because of that, we have a chance to end this series. Three straight wins. Provorov will be back in the lineup for this next game. I like that the only change I have to make to the forwards here is swapping Ovechkin and Svechnikov. Making that change to get one Kirill Marchenko in the lineup, although apparently I hit the wrong button. I didn't think I did. There we go. And then defensively, perfect. We're ready to go. We are ready to go. Detroit up 3-2 on Chicago. Calgary winning the Battle of Alberta. Toronto right now ahead of Carolina. Game 6, lineup stays the same. Lineup is stronger now with Provorov back in the lineup here. It's Game 6. Our first of two opportunities to punch our ticket to the Eastern Conference Final can we do so after an overtime winner from Alex Ovechkin? First period, and the early advantage, Ilya Mikheyev with the goal. Shots were just about even, but the former Leaf has us up 1-0 through 20 minutes. Second period, scoreless, beautiful, extremely beneficial. We go to the third. Can we get the insurance goals that we're probably going to need? No disrespect to Askarov, I just want to play it safe. 
12 minutes left. Not that I'm counting down every minute possible. Under seven, power play for Philadelphia killed off. Four, three, two, one. Yes, Gino, I thought they scored again. Four unanswered wins for the Russians. And we overcome a 2-0 deficit to eliminate the Flyers in six. Yaroslav Askarov, 31 saves. Absolutely phenomenal. It doesn't feel real. But the Russians are moving on. Six games over Philadelphia. Askarov shows up when we need him to. And we are going again to the Eastern Conference Final where we will be playing the Toronto Maple Leafs. Calgary awaits the winner of Detroit and Chicago. <sighs> but we make it past Philly again. They were a tremendous challenge all through the regular season. Tarasenko, point a game, you know, up to this point in this postseason run defensively. Eh, nine points for Kravtsov could be a little bit better. 11 points in 12 games for Svechnikov. If Kaprizov point a game, Gino still well over a point a game. Ovi at 10 points. Kavanaugh, 5 points and a plus 5. Very happy with that. 6 points for Barbashev. 11 points still for Evgeny Dodonov. He was a little bit quiet in that series. 4th line, Mikheyev, 4 points. 2 for Korshkov. And 7 for Marchenko. Defensively, Provorov, just 2 points, though. Through the 8 games he's played, he's a plus 6. Sergachev still looking okay. Alexiev and Romanov still doing okay. And Mukama doing in Zdorov again. Could see a little bit more out of them. But the key there... Askarov again was able to overcome a couple of meh games to start a series. He heads into the conference final with a 924 save percentage. The Russians move on. We already know that we are playing the Maple Leafs in the conference final. Over in the West, though, it will be the Calgary Flames and the Detroit Red Wings. In terms of lineup changes, I think we're good. But at the end of the day here, we are playing the President's Trophy winners. We are playing the top team in the league. The only team that had more points than us in the regular season. A clash of the Titans in the conference final. Let's see who will move on to the Stanley Cup to take on either Calgary or Detroit. Time will ultimately tell. Thank you very much for watching, as always. Greatly appreciated. Drop a like. Hey, subscribe if you haven't already. That'd be pretty damn cool. And greatly appreciated. And a shout-out to my patrons over on Patreon. Again, your generosity is tremendously appreciated. I will see you guys in the next one. The biggest series to date for the Russians. And it just might be a mountain that we're not able to climb.